I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Hannington in North Hampshire. It's uh, situated between uh, Newbury which is about 12 miles by car to the north and Basingstoke which is about eight miles or so by car to the southeast. And we're going to be doing a roughly five mile circular route We'll have a quick look around the village first before predominantly going out into the countryside and uh, enjoying some quite stunning views, particularly across the Thames Valley. And I'll expect we'll come across some interesting things along the way. Now I'm filming at the end of October. It's a little bit of a, a chill in the air. The sun is trying to make some brief appearances. There's a little bit of a wind, but should be spot on for a walk anyway. So do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at the village green in front of the church. Speaking of which, that's just behind me here. It's the Church of All Saints, and it dates from the 11th century with additions and alterations in the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th and 19th centuries. And in Saxon times, there was just a building with a an aisleless nave and chancel here, but now consists of a, a chancel, nave, south aisle and north porch. The chapel was rebuilt in the 15th century and the north porch and bell tower added in the 19th century. But on the south wall, there's this fantastically well-preserved sundial. I wonder if it's Saxon. Well, I mentioned the, the village green really is quite exquisite just looking behind me here isn't that wonderful uh, the uh, an old map shows that there was once a pond here in fact over on the um, the village information board there there's a, a photograph here that um, shows that the pond in 1925 obviously it's been filled in now and this timber framed structure in front of me is a, I think it's a wellhead erected in 1897 to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria. Okay, we'll have a little wander through the village. We are going to be heading in that direction eventually. Um, I'm just panning over there, that magnificent building there, Dicker's Farm, 17th century. Looking uh, rather splendid in the uh, autumnal sunshine. And I was reading that they have a country fair here on the green every two years. And I ought to mention the Hannington Silver Band, <laughs> formed in 1924. It plays at fates, private events, church services, that sort of thing. But so before we kick out in that direction, um, I just want to go to the other end of the village, just something to, to look at there. Well, this is the important building to find, <laughs> probably be our final destination, the Vine Inn, originally called the Wellington Arms. I've actually got an old picture of it as it stood on land that once belonged to the estate of the first Duke of Wellington. He was master of the Vine Hunt which was formed in 1791 and actually based at the Vine which is a, a 16th century estate and country house at Sherborne St John not that far away near Basingstoke. Anyway, when the Hunt Kennels moved to Hannington in the 1960s, the pub changed its name. Well, we're just going to make our way northwards now through the village. Look at this wonderful thatched cottage over here. And I was reading that, uh, well, part of this dates to 1360. And it's believed to be the oldest uh, cruck frame cottage in Hampshire. I think this is a two bay cruck structure. A, a, a cruck frame is basically one where the structure of the building depends on two or more A frames which go from the top of the building down to the ground. But oh that is quite uh, quite beautiful with the, uh, the roses arching over the door. Well, I'm now heading out of uh, Hannington and heading northwards along a footpath that's going to take us into the, the countryside just passing by the old rectory behind me. The, uh, the name Hannington comes from uh, 
farm of Hannah. And back in uh, the times of the Doomsday Book, uh, the uh, village and land was all owned by the Bishop of Winchester. Anyway, keeping our fingers crossed that it stays sunny. There's a few black clouds about, but uh, we should be okay. starting to get some cracking uh, landscape scenery now. This is looking sort of to the north and to the uh, northeast. Recently uh, ploughed fields. Now somewhere around here there's a Roman road that crosses here. It was the route of the portway and uh, it formed part of the link between Silchester which is about five miles north of Basingstoke and Salisbury, Old Sarum, and it eventually um, connected up to London, but I can't make it out at the moment. We might be able to get a better sight of it once we're on the other side of the valley. So just on the left here, this little bit of woodlands called Hannington Scrubs, and then just in the very far distance to the uh, northeast, there's a, a crossroads. We actually passed it coming into the the village when we were coming in by car, it shows on the map as Sawyer's grave. And it's where either a criminal or perhaps someone who committed suicide, which was thought of as an unnatural death in years gone by, um, they would have been buried there, but with a stake through their heart. Well, get my breath back. I've just uh, gone down into a valley and then made our way up onto a, a ridge and a uh, good excuse to stop and admire the view. So let me just show you where we've come from. Hopefully the sun's not going to get uh, in the lens too much. So we've made our way down that track into the valley and up this side. I can't quite make out that Roman road. Um, it goes across there somewhere. We will see it uh, in much greater detail later on in the walk. But uh, anyway, we're just going to head up over the ridge and when we get to the other side, we should get some really good views. Well, this is just for, for folk that might be doing this walk after watching the video. Go over the ridge, down the other side and then just look out for this uh, gate with, to a footpath on the left hand side. And then we go through there. Beautiful up here. So that's looking over to the east. I think that's uh, at the very, um, very top is uh, Plantation Hill to the east. And then just slowly panning round somewhere to the north there is King's Clear. And then you can probably make out some uh, white plastic rails. And that's all part of uh, Andrew Boulding's uh, horse racing uh, yard and stables. Well, might get a bit closer later on. I'll tell you, I'm loving this view from up here. Hopefully it's not too dark for you on screen because there are a few dark clouds around now. It really does show how vast that uh, training establishment is down there of Andrew Baldings. I wonder if next year's Derby winner is uh, in one of those stables. Who knows? But uh, I think just in front of me here, I've been watching these um, birds of prey swooping down and uh, I guess they're making use of the the thermal currents, I don't know. Unfortunately, they go so fast, I can't catch them on my little Canon camera. But it's terrific watching them. Well, one thing you won't fail to notice as you're walking along here, 
there's this transmitter that's just behind me. <laughs> now it's not the prettiest uh, bits of architecture, I grant you, but very much a necessity. The TV and radio mast here on Cottington Hill and it provides broadcast to Berkshire and North Hampshire. The mast is 431 foot high and if you include the antennae on top it brings it up to 498 foot. It was constructed in 1970. Well folks, uh, another pit stop. It's quite windy up here. Hopefully the audio is going to be okay. But ah, oh, wonderful up here. So let me show you what I'm looking at. So uh, there's the, uh, the transmitter just on the right there. And then this is looking uh, north. We've just come through those woods. Lovely uh, little footpath through the trees. And then that's uh, King's Clear down in the valley, down there. And then this is panning over to the west. And then the hill, all the little escarpment on the left there, there's some more gallops there. Again, that's part of the Ian Balding gallops, but that's Watership Down. Of course, uh, famous for uh, the setting for Richard Adams' 1972 novel about a bunch of rabbits. <laughs> of course, there was a film in 1978. And of course, I've got a bit of a connection because my young puppy is called Fiver and he was one of the, the rabbits uh, in, the, in the book and the film. Now, an ordnance survey map indicates an old settlement here and uh, there are certainly some earthworks. There may well have been a royal hunting lodge here and King John apparently stayed here for hunting uh, no fewer than 37 times. Certainly there was a deer park here and we'll see evidence of that shortly. The park remained in possession of the Crown until the 17th century when it passed into the hands of the Cottingtons. I think uh, that's when the hill changed its name from King John's Hill to Cottington's Hill. There was also a spectacular watchtower built here in the 18th century but that no longer exists just coming off Cottington's Hill now and I don't know if you can see there's a definite bank earthworks along the edge of this field here and if you look on an old map it uh, shows as Park Pale and sure enough it is part of the old uh, 13th century deer park part of the uh, enclosure that they would have had up here well this is about as far west as we're going to go on the walk there's the watership down and uh, the gallops up on the hill there. We're going to follow a footpath that goes along the side of this field all the way down to the bottom and then start heading back up sort of along the ridge there to the top. Well, I'm delighted to say that the sun has really come out now. It's a shame it wasn't out uh, when I was at uh, the top of the hill. I would have made some great photographs on the other side, but there you go. It is the end of October, so you can't have everything. So we've made our way down one side of the hill, and now we've got an uphill stretch. We are now on the Wayfarer's uh, Way. Uh, a 71 mile long distance path that goes from Walbury Hill in Berkshire all the way to Emsworth in Hampshire. Right, last uphill bit.
well, we've reached the top of the ridge. Good excuse for yet another pit stop and uh, one final look back at... Uh, uh, now the sun is out, it looks uh, so picturesque. And uh, the fields now, little green shoots coming through. I'm guessing that could be winter wheat that's been planted. I'm not 100% sure. Well, as we're sitting here, <laughs> enjoying this beautiful autumnal sunshine, got a little update on Logan. As um, many viewers will know, he does competitive obedience. And this year, he um, has qualified for the Kennel Club Good Citizen Special Pre-Beginners Obedience Stakes Final, which is being held at Crufts in March 2022. So we're thrilled about that. He's only the second Whippet ever to make the final in the 16 years that it's been going. And the previous Whippet to do it was actually our Monty, who did it two years ago when he was eighth. Now, Logan's not quite as good as Monty, but uh, we'll be doing our best anyway. And Fiverr, the little uh, puppy that um, you might have seen in previous videos, he started his obedience uh, training, he hasn't had a competition yet, but he's been doing a little bit of uh, dog showing and he's qualified uh, to compete at Crufts in the dog showing. So uh, it's going to be a busy time next March. Well, now made our way uh, up to the top of the ridge and have now come across Medham Lane. I mentioned that Roman road earlier on and uh, well, this is where we meet up with it yet again. And uh, this is where it's become a tarmac road, so a lot easier to see. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty dead straight. So just in front of me is the entrance to, uh, I think it's Walkeridge Farm. So we're going to follow a footpath there alongside it. And that's going to take us back to the village. <laughs> oh, there's still some left, look. I'll get some for you. Some really juicy ones further up. Hey. Most of them have gone over, but these are really good, aren't they? Probably the last time we'll see these on a walk. <laughs> well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. A super walk today. The sun did come out from time to time, which was great. We're off to the vine for some light refreshment. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy. Mm -hmm.